Hello everybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Harvey's New Eyes. Last time, we escaped the convent through learning about our restrictions and how to unlock them. Still have a ways to go, but uh, hopefully we can unlock all of these. Anyway, we need to find Edna, and in order to do that, we need to uh, get this map again. And... Or not. I said we need to get this map again, and... Oh, come on. Let's just grab it and, uh... Lily arrived just in time to see the flying topography tool disappear through a grilled window. And I'm getting Monkey Island 2 flashbacks with that map piece. The bar suggested that this was a lion cage. Obviously. So we need to get in there. That must be the police car. So this is the police station. Hey, we get a chili pepper. Yes, that's a chili, Lily. Ha! <laughs> I see what you did there. Anyway. And, of course, it's in the cell. The locked cell. The map lay out of reach. <sighs> anyway, let's take a look around here. The wine gums looked... Tasty. Lily took that as a sign that she wasn't allowed any. But we'll grab it anyway, because that's not a restriction. Nobody's explicitly said not to. Valozak direct. Mother Superior had used the same Valium pills the previous year, but Morphodinol Acute gave better results. And there's some Valium hanging out. I'm sure that's perfectly okay for a 10-year-old girl who it's not prescribed to. Lily liked everything that was colorful. Flowers, butterflies, and bruises she got from behaving badly. All right, so let's grab that. Because it's there. The officer was trembling all over. And it wasn't even that cold in here. Anyway, we need to get into that cell. Uh, what? What? Oh, oh, just a little girl. What are you doing out here in the middle of the night? Aren't you worried that the loonies will catch you? Uh-uh. Well, you should be, so hurry. Get back to bed. Or did you want to make a complaint? Let's do so. Uh-huh. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh, this had to happen someday. And who do you want to make a complaint about, if I may ask? Hmm, let's, uh, report Dr. Marcel. Uh, you don't mean Dr. Marcel, do you? Uh-huh. Shh, keep it down. The doctor is a very influential man. We all know he's got a few things to answer for, but... You still have to be very careful with accusations like that. Unless you have evidence, I really can't help you. Well, shoot. Well, maybe if we report ourselves, we can get locked up and get our map piece. Not map piece, it's the entire map. Uh, you again? Do you? Yes. Uh-huh. Oh, boy. Uh, and who? Uh, you don't mean yourself, do you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Police. What terrible things could a little girl like you have done? Children your age can't even be charged with a crime. The only reason to lock up a young kid like you would be to sober you up. But I'm sure a girl who looks as well behaved as you already knows to stay away from alcohol, right? Uh-huh. You see? Of course, if you insist, you can take a voluntary alcohol test anyway. The machine is over there, against the wall. But I can't arrest you if you haven't gone and drunk nothing. So in order to get in there, we need to get drunk. Hmm. Well, let's see if we can at least get ourselves a false positive. We don't have any... I don't think the wine gum will actually get us drunk. I don't even know what the heck <sighs> wine gum is. Is that a thing? Oh, well. Well, as we know, the only responsible thing for us to do now is get this 10-year-old Catholic schoolgirl drunk. And there's a bar across the way. And this song, I think this song is, uh... From the first Edna and Harvey game. Wait, right, we can look around here. Flounder to go. How convenient. But we don't have any coins to put in there. Lily liked everything that was colorful. Flowers, butterflies. Alright, uh, same thing with the neon yellow stuff. So we can grab this as well, and this guy doesn't care. In fact, we can even grab his collection jar, and he's just like, meh. Lily had never seen a bartender before, but she was pretty sure that they didn't usually wear nightgowns. This guy's wearing a nightgown? 
Can't really see that. Lily had also received a box like this after her father had been lost at sea. It probably took the Association for the Relief of Dead Seafarers a long time to collect this. And it's ours now. Oh, what do we have here? A little girl without parents, all alone in the night. How sweet. What brings you into this dark dive where no one can hear you scream? Alcohol. I can't serve children alcohol. I'm missing the recipe for the only alcoholic cocktail on the menu. The Volcano Berserker. Plus, I ran out of the ingredients. So, if you want a drink, you'll have to get me the right ingredients. And then, the drinks will be free. Here. The menu. Alright, so, uh, there's a few things we need to do here. So if we take a look at it. And this is the, uh, opening theme for the game in German, in the original German. So we have, uh, these drinks here. So the recipe is m completely missing for this one. And these ones aren't even alcoholic. And they don't have the ingredients for this. But we have two of them. You can see where the smiley faces are, what ingredients we have. So we have almost everything for the neon drink and one more for the knockout poison smile. But we don't even know what the recipe for the volcano berserker is. So let's uh, see if we can't find these recipes around. Let's start with the cemetery because that's a logical place to go in the middle of the night. You know what you have to do, Lily. Everything has to burn. Everything. I hate it when fires do that, don't you? Lily like flower. Oh yeah, same thing that says. Oh wait, there's some neon green, which it it's not even like a highlighter or a neon sign. It's just neon green stuff. Oh, spray can, I guess. And who is this? The girl seemed friendly. Well, let's talk to her. Um. What? I wait. No. This isn't Aunt Gorgula. My name is Miranya. Miranya the Medium. How many more times do I have to tell you? What? But that's one moment. Please stay on the line. Sorry, little girl. This could take a moment. It's that bartender, Max Mixo, again. A real pain in the ass. So dead, and yet so talkative. Come to think of it, the spirits are very unsettled today. They're all talking over each other. If only I had earplugs. What was that? Now listen to me, my dear lady. I'm not a greeting card courier. I'm sure that... Max Mixo, would you please shut up for a moment? Because there are others who... Who? No, I don't know anyone called Priscilla. Marania was busy. Lily could completely understand that. She knew how hard it was to ignore spirits. Especially those that tried to grab you at night. Yeah, they can be pretty annoying. Anyway, she needs earplugs. How about little tiny wine gum thingies? Hmm? What? Oh. Hi, little girl. What do you have there? Are those... earplugs? Fabulous! Thank you! It's exactly what I need right now. Hmm. No, these are too big. So... Hello? Can anyone hear me? <sighs> Much better. Yes! Loud and clear. Who wants to be first? Max Mixo? I could have guessed that. Could you possibly do me another favor? Uh-huh. It's about Max Mixo, the previous bartender at the village bar. He's worried about his legacy. The volcano berserker. He'd always hoped that this drink would make him immortal someday. We both know that his plan failed, but now he literally took the recipe to his grave, and he so wanted to leave it to posterity. It's very simple. The cocktail only has three ingredients. Wine gum, artemisia, and a chili pepper. Did you get that? Uh-huh. Thank you, Lily. Maybe the great Max Mixo can finally find peace. And me, too. All right, so we now have the recipe, which includes wine gums. These are the ones that were too big for her ears. And let's take a look. So, uh, look at her handwriting. It's so cute. Artemisia, chili pepper, and wine gum. And while she was talking, I looked up wine gum on my phone. Turns out in the UK, that's just the name for gummy treats, and they're non-alcoholic. Oh, well. So we got the chili pepper, we got the wine gum. We just need Artemisia, whatever that is. 
Hmm. Anyway, if you look over here, there's a little secret area. And this is a throwback to the first huh? Linda and Harvey game. From a long time ago. And you get an achievement for going there. I already got that one, of course. I actually got it in a failed recording, believe it or not. This is my second attempt. <laughs> but we can make one drink either way. Let's talk to this guy. If you want. Coming right. Oh, by the way, oh, that's sorry. a non alcoholic cocktail, but don't worry, there's enough other illegal substances in it. Perfect. So let's grab that, but uh, I don't think we want to drink neon colorings. But it might come in handy. Yeah, I think this song is saying something like Edna Breaks Out in German. I seem to remember somebody telling me that in the comments section of the first game. But uh, it's been a while. Oh, I don't want to go here. I wanted to go to the signpost, if I can... There we go. And let's head over and see if we can't find Garrett. The path that Garrett had taken led Lily to a small bridge over one of the brackish creeks running off from Moore Lake. Two trustworthy looking men in white lab coats were working there. Lily wasn't quite sure what to make of them. She also recognized Garrett in the bushes on the other shoreline. Apparently, he didn't want to be seen by the two men. And although the two nocturnal workers had made a friendly impression on Lily, she decided to follow the youth investigator's lead. And. Have you found anything yet? Do you have to keep asking that? I'll let you know if I discover something. Yeah, I guess you're right. I think Dr. Marcel's madness is starting to rub off on me. Ever since we found this stuffed rabbit by the lake, he's been obsessed. We should be taking care of patients instead of poking around the moor. And then there's that absurd plan with the hypnosis now. Stop already. And keep looking. Have you actually found anything yet? Well... Lily had heard enough. Apparently... The men in white were Dr. Marcel's minions. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel really was looking for her. It was now more important than ever to find Edna's hiding place. No kidding. So these guys are actually from the last game. This is the guy that uh, could hold his bladder for a really long time. And uh, we didn't see very much of this guy, but it sounds like Tony Danza. It appeared that Edna's concern had been justified. Dr. Marcel really was looking for it. It was now... Okay, we've already heard that. Garrett did what he was best at. Listening. Yeah, he doesn't really interact with people much. He just kind of listens. He needs to go report all this. Did you hear something? I don't know. Hopefully not another saber-toothed boar. I'm still out of breath. Oh boy. Saber-toothed boar? There was a sign on the feeding trough. Don't feed the saber-toothed boars. Saber-toothed boars are very dangerous. In the event of an encounter, make sure you don't look like a well-behaved convent schoolgirl. Saber-toothed boars are nocturnal, grow up to six feet long, and like to lurk in the shadows. They can be frequently found near the territorial herb Artemisia, since they mark their territory on the leaves of this plant. Therefore, avoid areas where this herb grows after dark. The Forest Ranger. Lily would have gladly heeded the warning, but she had no idea how to recognize Artemisia. Now, it makes an important point that they mark places that... Uh, they mark Artemisia. But, uh, how can we make that more visible? Well, this is their feeding trough here, and if we uh, give them a little extra something with it... But Lily, didn't you read the sign? You're not supposed to feed the boars. The forest ranger said so. You must not contradict adults. But luckily, you know that yourself. Luckily, we can unlock that one. And let's contradict an adult. <laughs> if the saber-toothed boars had to mark their territory, then they should do it properly. All right, and if we leave for a sec. <laughs> <laughs> I love how uh, she does the little noise too with them. That's so cute. And they mark it. Excellent. 
The saber-toothed boars had had some neon drinks and marked their territory, so this had to be their territorial herb, Artemisia. And nothing makes a better alcoholic drink than a piss-covered plant. Oh, baby. Alright, so we have all the ingredients for that. So, let's get ourselves wasted. If you want to order... Yeah, yeah. Well, luckily. A volcano berserker coming right up. But be careful, that drink packs a punch. And I'm not talking about punchy colada, if you catch my drift. I really don't. But that's okay. Oh, yeah. But Lily, what's that for? That's not good for little children. You must not touch alcohol. And milk is much better for your teeth anyway. <laughs> Look at my funny choppers. They're cute, aren't they? Uh-huh. So we had something else we need to unblock. The whole drinking alcohol thing. So let's... The ball of wool. Can I see it again? Uh-huh. And we're back in the dream world, which is now going to be a lot more expansive than it has been in the past. And a lot less terrifying. Anyway, whenever you want to get out of a dream world, you just have to drink some coffee. And so I don't want to touch it now. The coffee was black, just like the chasm Lily saw when she closed her eyes. <laughs> but there is an achievement for if you drink coffee, then get back in the world and drink coffee again. If you just drink a whole bunch of coffee and go back and forth, there's an achievement. But I already got that off screen because that uh, would have taken too long on screen. Lily had heard that Manny spoiled quickly in the sun. Well, we want that. And of course, we want some cigars to go with our alcohol that we'll be having. Hey, those are only for players. I'm a dog. <laughs> All right. Dogs playing poker. Nothing earth shattering. Well, then let's uh, join in the game. Hey, look. The ugly girl wants to play too. Then she has to place her bet. She can't play without a bet. Meow. I love this dog here, but, uh,. Yeah, we don't have any money, so we have to come back later, I guess. Someone had forgotten to suck on their ice cubes. What a waste. Indeed. Let's... Lily liked the cold. It reminded her of her bed. Ah. Uh, I actually like my bed being cold. I prefer it that way. Lily wanted to become a gold digger, too, when she grew up. Then she'd finally have her own pickaxe. <laughs> The cash cow didn't want to trample or devour Lily. It was simply ignoring her. All right, and there's a... Uh, there was bag. a lot of room for provisions in the saddlebags, so the cash cow wasn't forced to stop at every little milestone. Hmm. Anyway, let's talk to the gold digger. Um. Um. Howdy, stranger. What's a nice little girl like you doing in a rough place like this? Wait. You're not here for the gold rush, too, are you? Well, then you might as well just pack up your bags again. The only gold around here is in my mine. And I'm the only one who knows the way there. Plus, you can't get in there right now anyway. Hmm, why not? I knew it! You're after my gold! Well, you can just forget it. My gold mine is good and hidden. And even if you found it, you wouldn't get in. The entrance is guarded by a Wendigo. Lily wasn't interested in the mine, but this Wendigo made her curious. Could he be another manifestation of her behavioral blocks? Perhaps it would be worthwhile to look for the mine after all. Maybe. Well, forget it. The way to my mine is top secret. Even I have trouble remembering it. Oh, I should actually ride over there again. Hmm. We... You don't know what a Wendigo is, do you? Uh-uh. Well, I don't know much myself. It's some kind of Indian demon that's stopping me from getting into my mind. If you want to know more, you need to ask the shaman. He's knocking around here somewhere. A 
shaman. Say, so you kind of notice that the characters in uh, Lily's imagination are the same sort of uh, gnomes that she would see painting a colorful pink sculpture picture things. The shaman? No idea. I never met him personally. Sometimes I see his smoke signals on the horizon. That's it. But if anyone can tell you about Wendigos, it's him. Anyway, the first time I'd ever heard of a Wendigo was in Final Fantasy VIII. There's an enemy called the Wendigo. It's like this big, apish, primate, like, yeti thing. And also in a Supernatural, one of the very, I think like the very first episode, it's all Wendigo. Hello? The gnome made a trustworthy impression. So yeah, I have lots of uh, gnomes around here. But can we unblock that block that stops us from drinking alcohol? You just got to find out next time on Let's Play Harvey's New Eyes. Thank you for watching and have a good day.